Hello everyone, how are you today? Welcome to my channel. I am Dr. Paramjeet and you're watching Doctor Education. If you don't know me, then I'm a consultant physician cardiologist in Yashoda Super Speciality Hospital, Nehru Nagar, Ghaziabad, Delhi NCR and this is my channel. In this channel, I make videos about health and healthcare topics and there are a lot of videos already made on my channel. So don't forget to check out those videos and if you haven't already subscribed my channel then do that because once you check out the videos you realize that the information given here is very simplified and very very authentic because this information is not my opinion not opinion of an uh, not an opinion of a doctor it's basically deduced from us international medical library and it is an authentic and the most updated information about that particular health topic so you can trust this information so feel free to browse in my channel, check out for your favorite and your concerned health topics and don't forget to hit the bell icon guys when you subscribe. So today's topic is vitamin C and we are going to talk about what is vitamin C, what does it do and then how much of vitamin C do you need, what foods provide vitamin C, are you actually getting enough vitamin C, enough vitamin C in your diet. What will happen if you have a vitamin C deficiency? How vitamin C is beneficial in colds, in fevers, in infections, in aging, in cancer prevention? All these things will be seen today. So today we will touch all these topics and we will see is there anything like an overdose of vitamin C? Can you get any harmful effects from vitamin C? So all these things will be studied today and i will teach you about all these things so stay tuned guys let's start and don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you want to know about health and have health concerns then subscribe to my channel and hit the bell icon you'll be notified about all upcoming videos vitamin c is also called as ascorbic acid and obviously if it is called as acid it is an acid but this acid is water soluble there are only two vitamins which are water soluble it is vitamin c and vitamin b these two vitamins have to be taken on a daily basis because being water soluble they are very easily excreted out of the body and they cannot be stored so that's why you have to take these vitamins for them to perform their function in your body on a daily basis. So what is the function of vitamin C? Number one, vitamin C is a very good antioxidant. Being an antioxidant, it helps protect your cells from damages caused by free radicals. And free radicals are those compounds which are formed within our body when our body breaks down food. And free radicals are very dangerous. People who are exposed to free radicals in the environment, like if, if they are smoking too much, if they are in a polluted environment, even with ultraviolet lights of the sun, free radicals are produced. So free radicals increase the mutation, mutability of your cells and increase the chances of damage, increase the chances of cancer in your body. They even increase, that means hasten your aging process. You will grow old faster in such conditions. So first important function of vitamin C is it acts as an antioxidant, a very potent antioxidant against free radicals. Second important function that it is required, it is required for the production of collagen. Collagen is an elastic substance which is required for the structural uh, development of the body this is very very important protein required for wound healing thirdly vitamin c also improves the absorption of iron from the plant-based foods and fourthly vitamin c is very important in your immune system it works to protect your body from various diseases infections virus etc so vitamin c is very 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 important so the question comes how much vitamin c do you need the amount of vitamin C you need on a daily basis depends upon your age as well as your sex. So right here I have given a small chart of how much vitamin C do you need according to your age, sex and if you are breastfeeding. The most 
important is if you are breastfeeding you need a higher amount of vitamin C then secondly if you smoke if you smoke that means you have to take like 20 to 30 percent more 30 sometimes 50 percent more that means if you smoke then you need much more vitamin C than normal person if you do smoke then if you work in a polluted environment if you live in Delhi then you need higher amount of vitamin C and you know why I'm saying that because Delhi's EQI is going off the charts and it's very polluted the air is very polluted especially if you go out driving by your bikes then there is a big issue but still uh, the point is that you need higher amount of vitamin C and you should take like 20 sometimes 50 percent more of vitamin C you can add 30 to 50 milligrams of vitamin C to your daily basis diet then what are the foods which provide you with vitamin C obviously we all know that fruits and vegetables are the best sources of vitamin C and you should eat a lot of variety of fruits to get vitamin C but they are obviously present more in some fruits and they are present in less amount in some other fruits so the fruits in which vitamin C is present in more amounts are citrus fruits all the oranges the grapefruits the lemons all they have the vitamin C a lot the kiwi fruit also has a lot of vitamin C then other fruits and vegetables which also have higher amount of vitamin C includes broccoli strawberries and baked potatoes tomatoes they all have high amount of vitamin also understand vitamin vitamin C content of food may be reduced by prolonged storage the more you keep it the lesser amount of vitamin C it will contain then vitamin C content of food reduces even by cooking yes if you cook a food it becomes reduced but yes if you steam something or microwave something in that case the loss of vitamin C will be less as compared to traditional cooking fortunately many of the best sources of vitamin C like citrus fruits and vegetables uh, like salads are eaten raw so therefore uh, if you just make sure to include a good amount of fruits and vegetables salads in your daily diet then your vitamin C requirement is quite fulfilled easily now there are a lot of supplements vitamin C supplements also available in the market uh, most of the multivitamins have vitamin C and vitamin C is also available as uh, individual supplement as well now vitamin C uh, is also uh, used medically in the form of ascorbic acid sometimes the supplements are uh, in the form of other compounds like sodium ascorbate calcium ascorbates or mineral ascorbates biflavonoids but all the researches done in this field uh, all the researches done have not shown any benefit of all these specific individualized form of vitamin C from the natural occurring ones so all these are similar natural is obviously better because it gives you more vitamins than just vitamin C as well other things are also there so how can you make sure or are you actually getting enough vitamin C now I already said that if you take a certain amount of fruits vegetables salads daily basis then your vitamin C requirement is uh, mostly fulfilled but if you smoke those who smoke or who are exposed to secondhand smoke they have a higher requirement of vitamin C why because of two things number one because of the smoke there is a higher damage of free radicals inside the body so vitamin C is needed for the antioxidant purposes and people who smoke need like 30 to 50 milligram of vitamin C more than a non smoker so people who are smoking or living in a very unhealthy environment need more vitamin C then second infants infants who are fed cow's milk need more vitamin C because cow's milk has a very little vitamin C and heat can destroy the vitamin C whatever it is there so cow's milk is not recommended in infants under the age of one and breast milk and infant formulas are good in that case they have enough amount of vitamin C's then people who eat very limited variety of foods people who eat very fixed diets very limited variety of foods they also need high vitamin C because they are not getting vitamin C from anywhere because they are not eating a, a variety of food sometimes people eat only meat some people eat only dal roti only grains 
so there are a lot of variables around uh, around here very variable variety of people all around the world so if you're not eating variety of fruits fruits and vegetables salad then you need to take a higher amount of vitamin c you might consider taking supplements then people with medical conditions such as severe malabsorptions some types of cancers kidney diseases and some people who require hemodialysis because of kidney diseases these people need higher amounts of vitamin c so why what will happen if you don't get enough vitamin c so people who get little or no vitamin c if you consider it like if you get less than 10 mg per day for many weeks they will get scurvy scurvy is a, a disease which is a, a complication of low vitamin c but scurvy starts like fatigue then inflammation of the gums then small red purple spots on your skin then joint pains then obviously vitamin c is needed for wound healing so there would be poor wound healing then hairs will become like corkscrew hairs then there would be depression there would be swollen swollen and bleeding gums which already discuss then sometimes loosening of the teeth and uh, loss of teeth also is there and people also develop anemia hemoglobin deficiency because of scurvy or vitamin c deficiency so vitamin c deficiency if it is very uh, progressive if it progresses it can also lead to death so it's not a simple thing so it's not it's very important and if it is not treated it can lead to death so let's understand why vitamin c is important for your health what are the scientific research behind it so obviously scientists have studied vitamin c and we try to understand how it affects your health in certain health conditions as well so firstly we studied on cancer patients people with high intakes of vitamin c from fruits and vegetables might have a lower risk of getting many type of cancers such as lung cancer breast cancer colon cancer so vitamin c effect appears to be dependent upon how it is taken orally if you take vitamin c it does not raise the blood levels of vitamin c as high as if you can inject it intravenously so a few studies in animals have shown that very high blood levels of vitamin c might even shrink tumors but that is animal studies but more research is obviously needed to determine whether high doses of iv intravenous vitamin c can help patients with cancer other things which you need to know is that vitamin c supplements if you are taking with or without other antioxidants it might interact with your chemotherapy or with your radiotherapy so people who are having cancer should always talk to your doctor before considering to take high doses of vitamin c or uh, antioxidants then let's talk about heart diseases cardiovascular diseases people who eat a lot of fruits and vegetables obviously they seem to have a lower risk of cardiovascular diseases but research believes that the antioxidant contents of these food might be partially responsible for this association because the oxidative damage is the major cause of cardiovascular disease however scientists aren't sure whether vitamin c itself either from the food or supplements protects help protect the people from cardiovascular disease because fruit and vegetables have a lot of vital nutrients so it's not clear that only vitamin c is the main factor here so that's why taking fruits and vegetables is the key not taking vitamin supplements let's talk about age related macular dystrophy eye problem vision problem amd and cataracts are the two leading cause of vision loss in older people although the researchers believe that vitamin c or other antioxidants they do not affect the risk of getting amd but some research has shown that if you take vitamin c combined with other nutrients it helps in slowing down the progress of amd in another study they have seen that if you take a lot of vitamin c zinc vitamin e beta carotene and copper all these things if they are present in a proper amount in your diet in a little higher amount then you have a lower chance of developing advanced amds 
the relationship between vitamin C and cataract is unclear. Let's talk about common cold now. Although vitamin C has long been very popular remedy of common cold, research shows that for most people, vitamin C supplements do not reduce the risk of getting common cold. That means even if you take regular vitamin C, that does not mean that you will not get common cold. But people who take vitamin C supplements regularly might have shorter durations or milder symptoms that means if that means it reduces the symptoms and reduces the overall duration of the illness but using vitamin c supplements after cold symptoms start does not appear to be helpful so what does this mean that if you take a lot of vitamin c regularly it does not mean that an inf infecting virus or bacteria will not be able to attack you that means your immunity does not increase that means your immunity does not prevent the disease but the disease will be attacked in a better way handled in a better way and it will be of a milder form that means obviously there is a potency there is a good effect on your immune system and obviously your immune system is acting in a better way but you have to be taking vitamin c regularly if you start taking high amount of vitamin c after getting infected then does that does not help what that means is that it takes some time it takes some time for vitamin c to start giving these beneficial effects in your immune system and since the duration of the disease is in a couple of weeks then the time is much more than a couple of weeks if you take it regularly only then you will have the benefits so regularly taking these things is important nowadays vitamin c has been propagated as a treatment of some very crucial viruses like Nipah virus. Let me tell you, if you are taking vitamin C regularly, then it helps. Why? Because your body will kill the virus in a better way and you will have a milder form of the disease. The virus will not be able to take over your body. But if you take high doses of vitamin C after getting infected, then that is not so useful like it is propagated sometimes it's not so useful so a healthy regular diet of vitamin c is good it cannot prevent disease but it can help you manage tackle it better then the question comes can vitamin c be harmful taking too much vitamin c can yes be harmful in certain cases but it's rare it can lead to diarrhea because it is an acid it can lead to nausea, it can lead to stomach cramps and people can also get something called as hemochromatosis which causes the body to store too much amount of iron in the body. High doses of vitamin C could also worsen the symptoms some problems of iron overload and damage the body tissue because high vitamin C means more iron will be absorbed into your body because vitamin C increases helps iron absorption so obviously there is always a relationship so there is always a upper limit so these are the upper limits of vitamin c according to your age so this much should be taken maximum that's all about vitamin c today and i hope you have got some good information about this so one way of preventing a deadly viral disease like nipah virus or a zika virus or ebola virus in your body is by taking regular amounts of fruits vegetables and salads in your diet taking good amount of vitamin c citrus fruits regularly so that your immune system your body protective power is maintained so guys that's all for today i hope this information was useful and don't forget to check out other videos on my channel and if you like them if you are helpful if they are helpful then don't forget to hit the bell icon when you subscribe my channel and don't forget to share these videos guys you need to help me out in this and don't forget to write your comments tell me how you feel about these videos and don't forget to write if you need videos about certain topics and I'll make the videos about those topics as soon as possible because I have a list and I'll add them into a list. So please feel free to get involved. Let's increase the health literacy and doctor education community. Don't forget to follow me on Facebook and Twitter. This is Dr. Paramjeet. Till next time, stay connected, stay healthy.